So we've got our two solutions here. This contains exactly the same amount of copper sulfate. I've got two test plates here of aluminium. We've weighed both of them. And one we're going to etch with bubbles using our little aquarium pump with the, with the air stones. And then the other one we're just going to do normal. I'm going to etch them for 20 minutes. And at the 10 minute point, I'm going to take them out and just give them one brush. And we'll just see what produces the cleaner etch. Let's take a look at the results. So we've got the bubbles and no bubbles weights before and after. We can see that the bubbles has etched away almost double the amount of aluminium compared to no bubbles. I think it's clear to see that the bubbles is obviously a faster process. If we take a look at the actual up close shots of the half tone dots, I would say that I don't feel there's that much difference in the quality between them. The only thing that's happened is the bubble etching has just etched away more. So, so we've kind of lost a little bit more of the, of the half tones. But obviously that can be rectified by just reducing the amount of time you etch. What I'm really trying to look at is actually the quality of the line in the individual dots. And really, I would say that they look pretty much the same. And here we've got a side-by-side -side shot roughly the same area. You can see that the actual detail of the lines within the circles is near enough the same. Moving on to another part of the etch here. This one was interesting because I would say that the no bubble etch actually produced a little bit of a, of a cleaner line. You can see the difference there side by side. No bubbles is on the right. The bubble etch is on the left. It's definitely a more aggressive etch with the bubbles. And lastly, taking a look at the at the stripes. Again, if we just pay attention to you know, not, not the depth of the etch, but just literally the line quality of those stripes, I would say that they're roughly the same. I think that maybe the bubbles here produced a little bit more of a cleaner etch. If we look side by side, the bubbles is on the left, the no bubbles is on the right. So do you need a bubbler to produce good results in etching? I would say that it doesn't really seem necessary. I think that if you do have perhaps a weaker solution, if you are using the mordant multiple times and you're essentially just making a big batch of, of copper sulfate mordant and you're just going to be etching plates over and over again, I do think that the bubbles help with the etching process, definitely. We can see that it does produce uh, a more deeper etch more quickly. And that's probably partly to do with the fact that the bubbles are helping to remove the uh, the copper from, from the plate quickly. And also the bubbles are essentially circulating the mordant. So that helps with, with the etching process as well. The aquarium pump was like nine pounds from Amazon. So it's not really a massive investment. I probably won't be using it for just individual etches. I think after a few etches, once my mordant gets a little bit weaker, then maybe I'll put in the aeration, but if I'm doing a fresh batch, I probably wouldn't bother using it. Let me know your thoughts. If anyone does use a bubble or doesn't use a bubble and you've had different results, please do let me know. It'd be interesting to see your experiences with using a bubble in your etching process. But that is it for now. I will end it there.